Hello everyone, my name's Lewis and I've just finished my first year of studying astrophysics at university. And one of the tools that I used to help me get through that first year was my MacBook. Uh, this is the 2019 13 inch MacBook Pro with 16 gigabytes of RAM. And today I'm gonna go over a few of the essential apps that I use basically on a daily basis to try and help me get more organized and productive. So I've set out little timestamps for different categories of apps uh, there and also down in the description. So if you want to view a certain category and see what apps I use in that category, then you can click on those timestamps. Uh, but with that being said, let's get straight into the video. So the first category I'm going to talk about is the productivity and planning category. And this is just going to be full of apps that I use to try and stay as um, organized and as productive um, and as efficient as I can with my time. Uh, so the first app I'm going to talk about is Notion. Now I'm sure a lot of you have heard about Notion. It's a fairly um, popular productivity tool. Um, I used it at the start to help plan out my university stuff. Um, I've kind of switched it up now and I don't so much use it for university, but I use it for just general projects that I've got. So in terms of university stuff, as you can see, this is the way I set it out um, for my page. Uh, I used it mainly in my first semester, but then I switched up to a different uh, tool, which I'll talk about in a bit. But here you can see I've made my little schedule that I had for the first semester. Um, I also made my subject things here so I could put information about each subject. So if I click into those, I set up these little to-do lists um, with all my assignments. As you can see, I didn't finish them because I switched over to a different tool. Um, but you could make this completely customized to yourself. Now I started off using the to-do lists as my main sort of tracking thing on this tool. Um, I then switched it up to something like this. So this is a list of books that I want to get into and I want to start reading. Because um, I want to start getting back in, into reading as well. Um, <clears throat> so for instance I made this cable here with a list of books that I want to read. Um, I, you can add little status things, so you can add tags um, to help you organize your, your tasks or whatever else you're trying to organize. So in this case, I made a status of whether I read those books or not. Um, and I got a category thing here so I can see what sort of book it is. Uh, so for instance, if I wanted to um, read a science book, I could kind of look for these blue science um, tags that I put on there or for instance, productivity or whatever. Um, but the great thing about uh, Notion is you can set things to be their own um, page. So for instance, I could open uh, the bullet journal method, for instance, this is a book I read, and I could start making notes on it. So while I was reading, I could make a note um, like this, or I could just add a quote. Um, but you could also add in other things as well. So I could add in a to-do list. So maybe there was stuff I wanted to do in the book or wanted to go back over. So maybe um, read, read chapter one. And I could, once I've done that, I could check it off and it's done. Uh, I could also maybe add something else. So for instance, I could add um, a bullet point if I wanted to, but there's many other things you could actually do. So for instance, if I did that now, I could open it back up and I could see all of the notes that I made. So that's, that's a really great thing, especially for someone who's um, perhaps pursuing education. Um, I may be going back to Notion uh, next year. I'm going to try it out for a bit to see whether this sort of format would work better for planning out for university. Um, but yeah, you could make a bunch of different things to be completely um, organized and customized to whichever way you want. So the next tool I'm going to talk about is what I actually switched over to using for planning out university from Notion. And that tool is called Trello. Now, Trello is actually really good because it's mainly a productivity and planning tool designed for projects. So um, I used it primarily to help me plan out my revision and my studying and also plan out some of my larger programming projects as well. So um, here's some of the boards that I've made. You create a board and then what you need to do is you need to make these sort of categories of things. These can be anything, um, but I like to set it up as sort of like a to-do, a doing and then a done. So uh, this is a, the, one of my modules, I think this is my Planet Earth module. Um, and as you can see, I've got a bunch of these lectures here on these cards. So you make a little card like this, um, call it card, um, but I like to make them for each module. Um, and then once you've made the card, you'd stack them all, well I like to stack them all in the things to do um, little thing here. 
Um, and as I'm doing them, you can drag those over to whichever um, status you're in. So, for instance, as I'm doing this note, I can uh, click doing or I can drag it over to done once I'm finished. But as you saw there, I can actually click onto the card and I can add little notes about it. So, for instance, um, I like to add checklists to some of my bigger projects. Um, for instance, I'll add a checklist like this. Um, I'll add a bunch of things I need to do. And as I go through them, and I do though, I can actually see the progress that's being made on this little bar. Um, I've actually used this loads to help me plan out um, and track how I'm doing with certain projects. Um, you can also add in uh, like a, a deadline. Um, so you could say add a deadline for whichever day, so it's due tomorrow. And then you get this little icon here where you can see when it's due. So this is actually really useful and this is the main tool that I use to plan out my studying for um, all of my modules. And the great thing about the deadline is it actually syncs with the next app I'm going to talk about, which is my calendar app. So for calendars, I use just the regular old Apple calendar. And there's two main reasons why I use that. Uh, the first is because it comes pre-built in to the Mac um, and it's free. And the second reason is that I've had an iPhone for a couple of years now and all of my calendars um, are all synced up to my iPhone calendar, which is um, the same basically as this one. So all of my um, events and stuff that I've made on my old calendar is all synced up to this one. Um, so as you can see, I can go through and here's one uh, an example of how Trello connects with the um, Apple Calendar. Um, here are a bunch of um, lectures that I had to revise for an exam. Uh, I changed some of the statuses back to going uh, back to the things I need to do, uh, so you can see how those show up here. So I set a deadline for each day, so I had a little structure to my day. Um, as you can see, I've got lecture one and I put the little done thing there. So as you move the cards from one section to another, it'll actually update on your um, calendar as well. So that's a really useful thing that I found. Also, I have uh, my calendar synced up to my university calendar as well, which I'm sure a lot of people can, a lot of universities offer. You can sync up calendars to personal calendars as well. Now the next tool I'm going to talk about is um, one that is really useful, especially if you only have one screen. So sometimes I have a, an external monitor, but most of the time I'm just using my Mac. And so for the, when I use um, different uh, applications on the Mac, um, I like to have multiple open at the same time. And so I use this tool called Spectacle. Um, and what Spectacle allows you to do is it allows you to um, snap windows to certain parts of the screen. Um, this is something you can do on Windows computers, but you can't really do on Mac without um, some sort of app. Uh, there's a similar app out there called Magnet, um, but you have to pay for that. Um, but uh, yes, Spectacle is free, so I just picked up Spectacle. Uh, so if I look at this and I wanted to have Notion, um, and I can snap that then to the left-hand side of the screen, and it's literally as simple as that. I could then open up Trello, and I can snap that to the right. Uh, you can also do shortcuts as well, and the great thing about this is it actually shows you the shortcuts for each of the keys um, on the app, so you don't actually have to um, go looking on Google or anything for the shortcuts, they're all there next to it, so you can actually see uh, what the shortcuts are. And I really, really like using this, um, especially with my um, vision notes. So usually I'll have, um, on the right hand side of the screen, um, some sort of like Word document that I'm making the notes in, and then on the left hand side of the screen, I'll go on my Google and I'll open up my uh, revision lecture videos, which my university provides. Um, but yeah, you can even open up textbooks online and then you could you know, copy stuff off from one side of the screen to the other. And it's just a really useful thing for um, getting an organized desktop. So the next app I'm going to talk about has been, without a doubt, the most effective productivity tool that I've ever used um, on my computer. And that app is called uh, Cold Turkey Blocker. Um, and what it does is it actually allows you to block websites for a certain period of time. Um, and I've always found myself getting distracted by stuff like YouTube and Twitter and Reddit and stuff. And if you're one of those people, this could really help you. So what you do, you open up Cold Turkey Blocker, you go over to blocking lists, um, I'll add a new block list, for instance, and I'll call it um, example. Um, and then what you can do, you can add a URL. So I'll add in youtube.com, add that in, save. And then you can go over to timers. Um, I'll click on example, I'll set a timer for today. Um, and I'll, you know, give it three minutes, for instance. I'll turn it on. Yes, I'm sure. 
And then what it'll do is it'll actually block YouTube uh, from being able to get opened. And it'll give you a little, um, it'll give you a little motivational quote or fact or whatever. But what's really important about this is actually basically impossible to um, prevent. So there's no way of getting around the block. I can't do anything. I can't close out of it and then go back onto YouTube. It's still blocked. Um, so this is really useful. It basically forces you to be productive and stop procrastinating, which is a really useful feature. And the last app I'm going to talk about in this uh, category is just my cloud storage option. Um, which I think everybody should have. It's not really that interesting, but the cloud storage option I go with is Google Drive. I just find it particularly useful and particularly easy to use. Um, I like the um, way that it works and I just like how it syncs everything automatically. But any sort of cloud storage option is um, acceptable. Just it's important to have it just in case something happens with your hard drive. So the next category I'm going to talk about is the general education category. And this is just going to be the apps that I believe that most students, if not all students, would use at some point um, while using a Mac. And so the first sort of group of uh, apps in that category would be the Microsoft Office uh, package. Um, now, my university offers Microsoft Office for free uh, with the university email. Sometimes you won't have that and you'll have to get it and pick it up yourself. Um, there are other sort of alternatives out there. I know that the pre-built pages and sort of Apple versions of that is free with a Mac. I personally never used them. I just preferred using the Microsoft stuff. Um, but for instance, you know, I'll have Word. Um, this is the one that I use the most. Um, I often use Excel as well, um, but not so much now that I'm getting further into sort of um, mathsy stuff. I actually do a lot of that myself. Um, but Mainly Word is what I would use and I think a lot of students use Word as well. Um, it's just the best sort of writing app for the majority of people. It's literally so easy. I don't even have to really go into it much. Um, you can probably, you probably all know how to work it. Also in this sort of category, I guess I could put in Google Chrome. Um, you know, most people use Google Chrome anyway. It's my sort of browser of choice. Um, but yeah, I do a lot of my research on Google Chrome, I do um, all of my lecture videos and that, I watch those on Google Chrome and stuff, so yeah, Google Chrome and Word are probably the two most used apps that I actually use. So the next category I'm going to talk about are the course specific apps. Um, these are the apps that I specifically use for my course, which I don't necessarily think other courses would use. Um, maybe some that are similar to astrophysics. Um, you know, like physics or other sciences or computer science, but not, you know, stuff like English or any other um, sort of different uh, subjects. And so the first app I'm going to talk about in this is um, Anaconda and specifically Spider, which is a package inside of Anaconda. And what Spider actually allows you to do um, is it's a sort of programming uh, tool which you can use to write p uh, Python code, um, which is what we use. Um, and it allows you to run it in the same app. So it kind of creates like a virtual environment um, for the code to run in. Um, so on one side of the screen, you can see we have um, the little box where you can actually write the code. Um, and then on the other part of the screen, you can see the uh, variables and then you can also see the output as well. Um, so this is actually a really useful app because it allows you to see where there's errors in your code without having to like go through the whole process of running it normally. Um, you can quickly see where the errors are. Um, and this is the uh, program which my university offers or um, recommends that we use. We actually use this in our programming classes. Um, so I like to use this most of the time while I am doing programming stuff because it's just uh, what my university says to do. So another programming tool that I like to use is Sublime Text. This is not recommended by my university and it's not used by my university. Um, but I like to write some code in it sometimes because not only does it make you feel more like a programmer because basically loads of programmers use it, um, but it actually um, has a really nice layout and a really simple layout. Um, and I really, really like the way that it works. Um, but it's also really useful because it allows you to write not only in Python, but basically all of the main uh, programming languages. So most programmers know about Sublime Text because a lot of people use it um, and I'm one of those people. Um, I don't definitely don't use it as much as I use um, Spider and Anaconda um, but 
<clears throat> I use it quite a bit for learning new languages, so I'm trying to learn like a subcategory of Python, which is Manim, and you'll see that come up in a few videos in the future. Um, but that can't really be done in um, Python, in, in Spider, sorry, um, or at least it's really hard to do. Um, so I prefer to do that in Sublime Text. Another app that I use, but definitely didn't expect to use, or, or wouldn't have thought that I'd be using through um, a physics degree, is actually uh, Adobe Illustrator. Um, now you may be thinking, why would I use Adobe Illustrator? And I definitely would have thought the same. But I actually use that quite a bit during my lab reports um, to actually make diagrams. Um, you know, often you'll find like diagrams online and stuff, and um, I know some people like to take those and just use them. I prefer to actually build my own diagrams and draw my own diagrams. Um, I'll probably show a few on the screen now. Um, it's actually really simple to do, um, but it actually makes my work look a lot more professional, and um, I really like using it. It's better to learn it um, and not use it than to not learn it and end up having to use it. So I like to make all of my diagrams and stuff myself. Uh, for all of my papers that I need to write um, and I, I do that through Illustrator. Okay, so those are kind of the general um, science sort of apps out the way. Uh, moving on to the actual like astrophysics, astronomy sort of things that I use. Um, I've not really used these with my course. Um, a lot of them I've just used for my personal sort of projects, um, but I have actually submitted coursework with um, work that I've used these apps for. And so the first one I'm going to talk about is something called StarStacks, and um, the name kind of suggests what it actually does. Um, so what this does, it actually stacks images on top of each other, and it actually allows you to make star trail pictures. Um, so one of the projects that I had to do was take a picture of the night sky and analyze that picture And so I used this app and the next one I'm going to talk about to actually do that So the, the sort of way that you use this app is very simple it, it describes what it needs to do So you drop images here I usually drop it about you know 100, 200, 300 images um, of the stars um, you, Once you've dropped the images in you would, you would align them, you'd stack them You can stack them in different ways and what you end up doing is you actually end up with um, star trail pictures that look like this. So I, had, I gave that a go a couple of times um, and I just really really like how the images came out with this app. Um, obviously doing astrophysics and, and studying astrophysics I really enjoy looking at the night sky, um, I really enjoy studying the night sky, so an app like this was really, really useful for me and I really enjoyed using it. The next one kind of falls into the same category and it's called uh, Linkaos, or Linkaos, or I don't know how he's meant to say it, but what it does is it's a very similar thing, um, perhaps it's a bit more complex and a bit more um, in depth, um, but this actually allows you to um, align images of um, astronomical objects. So if I was taking pictures of the moon, um, you wouldn't normally take just one picture uh, for, for a number of reasons, you know, sometimes you just get a little bit of smudge on the camera or you get um, a cloud going in the way. So you usually take maybe like 50, I usually take around 50 to 100 pictures of the moon um, and then I like to stack them all in here. Um, what it actually allows you to do then, it, it sort of um, analyzes the picture you've got and it chooses the best parts of the picture um, stacks them all on top of each other and you will usually come out with a clear image if you've done it you know right um, it takes out all the noise as well which is a really useful thing especially uh, with cheaper equipment uh, so I just use my DSLR um, I think you can use probably use um, phone images on this as well but it, it takes out all the noise as well so it's really really useful for that um, I don't know if I've got any images that I've used this for I'll show them on screen if I have um, but the quality of images that come out of this is a lot better than what you would get with just uh, a camera or just uh, your phone. So the last category I'm going to talk about is the content creation category. These are the apps that I use to make my YouTube videos. Um, there's again not too many apps that I use for this, um, but I'll go over a couple. Uh, first of all is Audacity, which is what I'm using to record the audio for this video and for all of my uh, other videos. Um, it's a free software, a lot of people use it, there's, there's a lot better software out there which you can pay for. Um, one, I'm not that big on YouTube, two, I'm a student so I don't really want to be paying for those 
um, where I can just use um, Audacity, which does a good enough job. So the other recording app I use is OBS, um, which is what I use to record my screen, as you can see. Um, and yes, yeah, mainly for streaming, I think, but um, I've always found it to be useful for recording, screen recording, whatever, screenshots, um, and it's free as well, which is pretty good. In terms of post-production, I tend to use the Adobe product, so the, uh, you know, Adobe After Effects, all the um, little graphics that I add into my videos, um, as well as my intro and outro and stuff. Um, and for my main sort of editing, I use Premiere Pro. Um, I've never really used Final Cut Pro, um, and I've already got the Creative Cloud package, so may as well use the Premiere Pro stuff. Um, I've always found it to be really useful, really easy to use, especially once you just watch a few tutorials online. Um, and yeah, for my thumbnails I use Photoshop, like most people, and uh, maybe sometimes I'll use um, Illustrator, such as for making my channel logo and stuff. Um, all of that was done in Illustrator. So that's the end of the video, that's basically the bulk apps that I use on my MacBook for uh, university and just other things as well. Um, there's obviously other apps on here, but I don't use them as much, or basically never use them. Um, so hopefully you found this video useful or interesting. Um, maybe you can take a few notes on this and use a few of the apps. I'll leave links to where you can download most of the apps um, in the description. If there's any apps that you would recommend that I haven't mentioned, make sure to leave them down in the comment section, because I'm always um, looking to add new apps which can help me be more productive um, to my MacBook. Uh, but with that being said, I want to say thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. And if you want to stick around for more videos, make sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell uh, icon for notifications when I upload. Um, and with that being said, I want to say thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.